Hi guys and welcome to the Evenos YouTube channel. So in today's video I wanted to talk to you guys about a question that I think I get asked probably the most sorry I've got my laptop here which is why I keep looking over here and um, but I probably get asked at least once a day on my YouTube channel and um, basically I missed a whole bunch of comments and messages um, of people just asking me questions or just chatting on my YouTube video comments um, by accident so I so apologise if you've left me a message on YouTube and I haven't replied it is most likely because I just missed it. But basically, a good few of those messages that I have read over the last couple of months, I've read back over the last couple of months, are about the topic. And I've written it down because I wanted to make sure I created content for this topic, is how long does it take to start making art printable sales on Etsy? So if you are creating an art printable business on Etsy and you're just getting started, how long does it take you to actually start making art printable sales? And you are probably not going to like my answer, but please let me explain and I will give more detail about it in a second. But the answer to that question is always going to be as long as it takes. And I don't mean to say that to be like, oh, just however long it takes and you should just keep going forever. That is not what I mean. What I mean is actually making art printables or printable sales on Etsy is not about at all how long of a time that you wait and then you'll just start making sales because you've waited this long there are other factors that matter more 10 times more than time and when you get those right then you start making sales on etsy so it has very very little to do with time apart from you know how long it takes you to set everything up that is kind of the reality of it so I wanted to basically just talk to you about a couple of things that actually make the difference between whether you're making sales on Etsy or whether you never make sales on Etsy because you haven't applied any of these things. Now I have listed down, because I'm trying to be super organized here today, but I have listed down the things that I think actually matter when it comes to making sales on Etsy, particularly for art printables and printables on Etsy. Because I'm telling you now, time is not the number one factor there is no if you just wait a certain amount of time you'll start making sales on etsy it doesn't happen and i know this for a fact because when i started my etsy shop i think i've told people this before it took me about six months to realize that i was not making any real sales on etsy and perhaps i need to do something with my shop in order to actually you know see results from all the work that i put in in my etsy shop and as soon as i sat down went back to the drawing on board figured all of the things out that i needed to do and started implemented them my shop started making sales and there was no time bracket between the two waiting six months doing everything else wrong produced the results of practically no sales and doing all of these things that i mentioned here and giving yourself a couple of months to set it all up meant that i was actually making sales on etsy so let's dive straight into all of these things and hopefully I will not be too long on this because and the reason why I'm saying I don't want to be too long on this is because I actually have a full hour free workshop that I've been promoting and basically giving away in the description box to each video that I'm creating around this because in that workshop I literally go through everything that you need step by step in a checklist format everything that you need to set up your own printables Etsy shop and actually start making sales. So this is me just breaking down a few of those things in just a shorter video because I don't want to upload an hour long video onto YouTube. But if you want to know the in-depth, if you want to grab a pen and a piece of paper and just write down everything that you need so you can get started building your own printables Etsy shop, definitely head down to the description box below grab the free workshop and it really is just such a helpful resource but back in this video i wanted to just talk to you guys about four things that make the actual difference between making no sales on etsy and actually making sales on etsy so the first thing i'm going to dive straight into and this is something that took me a long time to figure out so i am like i always say i am never judging anyone for not doing this at the beginning or not realizing it but the first thing you'll need to really consider is are you creating products that an audience are actually looking for on etsy because 
it is so easy, particularly with things like art printables or printables on Etsy, to just create products that you really like or that you think, oh, people might like this on Etsy. So I'm going to create this, I'm going to bung it up on Etsy, and there should just be loads of sales coming in. And hopefully by now, if you've been watching any of my videos or if you are on my art printables on Etsy course in particular, you will know that it is not about that at all. All. you need to be focused on your audience and you need to make sure that that audience is on Etsy and searching for the products that you create that is the most important thing if you are literally creating products because you like the look of them you like that quote you like that piece of graphic that you put on there and you fling into your shop that is not how to make sales on Etsy you need to do your homework you need to go on the etsy platform make sure that there is an audience for the type of products that you create and when you're ready to go even more in depth as i talk about on my course and i talk about a little bit in the workshop as well when you're ready to do your research and sit down and actually figure out what your audience and your niche are interested in right now what themes and trends they are looking for on etsy on Pinterest, on the online world, that is what you need to focus on so that you know what you need to include in your products to make them appealing to the audience that you were trying to create for. And creating products that are attractive to an audience is what makes the difference between never making sales in your shop and people just scrolling by your Etsy listings and never really clicking or paying attention to them, to people finding your Etsy listings and thinking that's exactly what I'm looking for, clicking on them and purchasing them. The next thing that is see a lot of people do at the beginning and again I did the same when I first go to my art printables business is really not paying that much attention to the quality of your listings and particularly your listing photography or your listing photographs that you use and your descriptions compared to your competition on Etsy compared to the other people posting art printable or printable listings on Etsy because it is so easy to just kind of think Ah, oh, that looks all right to me when it comes to a listing photograph and to just whack it up and do that for another hundred art printables that you create and sit back and hope that people will notice your listings over everybody else's. But if you've not taken the time to actually go through Etsy, see what your competition's doing, see what their listings look like, see what their quality of their listing photography is, what your audience are looking for when they're looking at listings, when they're looking at the photography of your printables or the kind of mock-ups of your printables, are you competing with what else they're seeing on the Etsy platform? Now, competing does not mean that you have to have the most stunning art printable listings or printable listings on the Etsy platform in order to get anyone to look at them or click on them, but they need to be super relevant to what your audience are already attracted to on Etsy. And doing your research when it comes to not only making sure that you're creating beautiful listing images for your products, for your printables, but also making sure that your descriptions are explaining anything that your audience tends to need to know. For example, when it comes to art printables, making sure you're clear on the sizes of your art printables, making sure that those sizes are sizes that your audience already commonly purchase. But like something that I completely did, it's a little bit of information here that I completely got wrong at the beginning. When I first started creating my art printables business, I was literally, I think offering like two print sizes that I had just guessed maybe would be the right things for my audience and I did no homework on that whatsoever and it was not until I went did my homework and realized that they were looking for much bigger sizes than what I was offering and there were much more common sizes that people were purchasing than what I was offering made me realize that I was cutting out a whole segment of my audience that would purchase my art printables if I had the right sizes for them. And just by making that adjustment started to bring a whole new audience, in fact, most of my audience to my shop. Make sure that it is high enough quality against your competition in Etsy search. Make sure it's crisp and it's the right color schemes and the right look for your type of audience and for the niche that you're going for. But also making sure that your descriptions are clear, that they have all the information that someone needs and that also you are offering the right variations for your product, the right sizes or whatever it is that your particular printable requires. But those things are so, so important and make 
makes so much more of a difference than how long you sat there waiting for sales to come in. The next thing to pay real attention to is SEO, search engine optimization, and the keywords and the tags that people are using to actually search on Etsy to find products similar to your own and similar to what you want to create. I know SEO is a minefield. I oh you have to work with it but i truly sometimes cannot stand seo and particularly when i first started creating digital products online and i was building my etsy shop and i was then how to create ebooks and i was doing lots of different things i had to work with seo and i had to figure out tags and titles for a whole different bunch of platforms which talk about overwhelming yourself i definitely recommend just focusing on one platform at a time now but I, at the time, I think I did what so many people do, which is I just kind of thought, what would I call this? What would I search for if I was looking on Etsy? You know, so I might have an art printable that's got a funny slogan or something like that. And I would just be like, I would probably type in something like this, which is a great starting point for, you know, what would you call this art printable? What, could, what words could you use in SEO? But I'm super, super about not leaving it down to maybe impossibility. And I'm really, really an advocate of using things like a search engine tool. So for example, on Etsy, there's things like Marmalade or E-Rank that can just help you clarify so much easier what keywords, what trends and themes are happening on Etsy that you can actually use inside of your titles and your tags. And I just think that it's just an easier, better way to do it. So if you can afford to, you know, invest in something like an Etsy search tool, do it 100%. It just takes that stress out entirely. But also because of the fact that, yes, we might think that this is what we'd be searching for in these kind of keywords. I've even done, which I think lots of people did in the past as well, where you'd go and you'd see what other keywords people were using. But now I realise, particularly through using things like um, Etsy search tools, that's not a genius idea either because you have no idea whether that keyword is even still popular, whether it had a real heyday in its time and that person really capitalised off making sales on that popular trend or theme that came in. But now you throwing that into your listing is not gonna do anything because it's not a popular keyword anymore or whether or not they are driving traffic to that product or to that listing through a completely different way that's got nothing to do with SEO. There are so many different ways that it can not work out to just find tags that other people are using and whack those into your listings. And you don't even know sometimes how many sales that product's making or whether it's even worth going after that keyword. So really using something like a search tool, something like E-Rank and Marmalade, particularly on Etsy, I just find takes the stress and the guesswork because they have so many more tools as well. And I'm not promoting them as in like not sponsored or anything. I'm just genuinely saying that just for me, I really don't enjoy SEO. And so having tools that can help just makes a difference. And the thing with Etsy and Marmalade as well is they have a lot of other tools that can help you track things like trends, things that are popular and that are going on on Etsy. So it also makes it easier for you to figure out what your target audience are actually looking for, what they're interested in right now. So yeah, that is something I definitely recommend taking your SEO seriously and not guessing at it and investing in something just to help you solidify what keywords to use. Because if you're using the wrong keywords, it can be devastating to a listing that otherwise is absolutely amazing. If it could find the right audience and driving that traffic and sales through organic Etsy search. And finally, it's something I wanted to talk about because I received a message where someone, basically I don't know whether they were just promoting it or whether they were actually asking me a question, I don't know. Um, but basically, they were just talking about how they had seen a shop that had one product in it and then made over a thousand sales and how was that working and how could they do that and in reality when you are seeing one a shop on Etsy that has one product and is making over a thousand sales you pretty much know that, that product is not doing all of that through just organic Etsy search it is not that a thousand people instantly found that one product on the Etsy search engine and just fell in love with it that much that they all bought it. Most likely that's telling you that that product is basically being put on the Etsy platform, which is amazing, totally brilliant to do. And that that company or that person, perhaps alongside organic Etsy traffic, is also driving external traffic to that product 
to make sales and that is an absolutely brilliant valid way to create sales and make income on Etsy using the Etsy platform. I personally do that too. I have certain products that don't do massively well on Etsy because it's not really a product that I've designed for organic Etsy traffic. It's a product that I sell on Etsy because I love the Etsy platform. I love how easy it is to be able to create a digital product and sell a digital product on Etsy. But the majority of the time, I've learned how to drive external traffic to that product so it can make sales. The problem that I find that you'd sometimes get when people just find or discover a shop like that and suddenly think that that is how Etsy works. They suddenly think that you don't need to do all the other things that we talk about in the videos or that other people, when they're talking about their experiences selling on Etsy, you're doing the other videos because they think, well, if this shop is doing it without that, then you don't need it all. And that's not true. What basically that's saying is you can see somebody who is doing a phenomenal job at driving traffic to a product and making sales from that product, which you can 100% do inside of Etsy shop as well. Not even can, should do. It should be part of your business model with building your Etsy shop. And on my Art Principles and Etsy course, I have whole modules on the importance of building external traffic funnels why you need to do that, not only that you should do that, and also how to do it. And I literally go into everything and how to actually do that yourself. What I never want people to think is that they're not seeing a kind of exception to the rule when they see a shop that has one product and has made over a thousand sales in you know a zero time span. And to think that that should go for every shop that sells on Etsy. No, if you are focusing on building up an Etsy shop with multiple products, you want to be able to drive in organic traffic from Etsy and capitalize on Etsy and how they can drive an audience to your shop, then you're most likely going to need more than one product. But what I wanted to use that to highlight is alongside all of the things that I go into, for example, in the workshop that I talk about on my Outpoint Tools and Etsy course, that like I have a number of modules where I'm talking about how to build up and grow your organic Etsy traffic on Etsy search driven from Etsy itself to your shop to make those organic sales. Another thing that can really help your shop grow and you should really factor in is building your own external traffic funnels because as that kind of example highlights, but I know personally from my own experience, you can also make amazing sales on Etsy just by setting up systems and structures outside of Etsy to drive an audience in to purchase products inside of your Etsy shop. And you can do that for one particular product that you wanna you know, focus on driving an audience to purchase that type of printable, that art printable, or and what I also encourage you to do, to build up your external traffic for your shop as a whole, so that you're building up an audience of people that are excited to come to your shop and purchase straight from your business and your brand because they love your products and what you represent. And that can take a little bit of time to build, especially if you have no experience with it at all. But like I said, I show you exactly how to do that on the Art Printables on Etsy course. I talk a little bit about it in the free workshop I have below. And I do have some videos as well on YouTube where I talk about the importance of external traffic because not only do I think that it is awesome for helping you make sales in your Etsy Etsy shop but I also think it's really important for protecting your Etsy shop in the long run as well so there are lots of benefits to also driving an external traffic to purchase your printables in your Etsy shop I just want to talk about the fact that over time and how long you just sit there waiting for your Etsy shop to make sales if you use that time to do the things that we've talked about and to focus on building external traffic and driving in external traffic to your shop those are the things these four things that we've talked about that actually make a difference between a shop that never really makes any sales and a shop that goes on to start making sales and builds those sales over time so I just wanted to create this video. I really hope it's not ridiculously long, but you know what I'm like with, with long videos, which is why I did not want to upload an hour long video um, talking you all the way through setting up your Etsy shop. So like I said, I created the workshop. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Definitely, if you're thinking about creating your own art printables Etsy shop or printables Etsy shop, check out that resource because I really put everything into it so that you can actually just take pen and paper and you can just write down everything that you need and then you can get going yourself. As I always think, the best way to build your own online business is to actually just build your online business. You can watch everything in the world, but the best way to learn is literally just hands-on on the job. So 
yeah i hope that this video is helpful i hope that you've enjoyed it definitely check out the description box below for everything i've mentioned the free workshop my art principles and etsy course everything will be linked down below and i hope that these videos are helpful for you guys i just really want to be there to support you guys with building your own online businesses particularly something like an etsy business because i just know how beneficial it can be and how awesome and fun it is as well it's a fun online business to create and i enjoy and love having mine and if you want to create your own i really want to help you create your own too because i know how beneficial they can be and how fun and life-changing they can be so yeah i will see you in the next video guys bye